Good morning, everyone, and welcome to today's session of Financial Services Tech Oracles. I'm Jerry Murphy, your host. Joining me today is Dan Myers. Dan and I go back, uh, I hate to say decades because I don't think we're that long, but Dan and I have had many uh, jobs together at different companies where we've done services for financial services, very large international corporations, even smaller ones, a uh, lot of work in the financial services. And I, uh, so first, welcome, Dan. Thanks a lot. I appreciate you uh, taking the time to talk to me and share some of your experiences. Thanks, Jerry. Thanks for having me. And I think it's probably a decade and a half or so. <laughs> that we've known each other, but uh, certainly yes. it's longer yes. than that, that we've both uh, been in the industry. So one of the things I want to talk about that we've both had a lot of experience with, but I don't hear people talk as much about it as they probably should. And that's negotiating their carrier contracts for their net, people's networking services, for their telco services. Uh, that's a huge part of people's uh, budgets and financial services. And they've clearly morphed a lot over the last uh, five or 10 years, especially, right? And in your experience, the first thing I want to ask you is what are some of the biggest mistakes that you see people making when they are negotiating these contracts? Um, first, I'd say going fast. Um, you take your time, understand it and have an adversarial discussion with your carrier or your or your provider and, and go into the discussions informed. What you should be looking to do is have both of you coming out feeling that you both won um, so that you're going to have a long-term great relationship with the vendor you choose. Oh, that's a, that's a great idea about actually it doesn't have to be your adversarial creating a win-win situation. Now, when you're going into this first meeting, what is a good idea for how people actually approach this initial meeting as they're on the at the beginning stages of actually doing their negotiations? Are there things they should be doing or maybe not doing? Um, first of all, prepare. Um, understand what you're looking, out, uh, looking to get out of the deal. Um, it'd be great if you could get the contract ahead the time or the presentation at a time sometimes that's going to be difficult to do so i would say go into the first meeting understanding what you need out of the deal and what and non-negotiable points are during this first meeting i think it's for me it's mostly a listen listen and ask questions you should come out of it without any end of the term of the contract or the rationale that your carrier has in presenting those terms so um couple things on that. Don't react positively or negatively. Keep your emotion to your, if you see a good price, don't say yay. If you uh, see something you don't like, don't scowl. Um, you know, be uh, stone face, play poker and absorb. No, that's a great, I like, I think we are all have this tendency to just get everything you want on the table uh, at the beginning. And that's not necessarily the best thing. You want to be friendly, but not necessarily share, uh, you know, leave all your cards on the table. I mean, if you've got what would be like a full house of information, uh, it would be better not for them to know that. Or if all you got are, is nothing, it's probably good that they don't know that either. So uh, another thing that occurs to me too is people are so focused on getting the cheapest price they can. But when you're looking at the overall contract, it's maybe not necessarily the most important or the only thing that you should be thinking about when you're looking at all the terms and conditions that actually make up your contract. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? Oh, I think you're right. I mean, if, you know, prices, um, if you get a great price and you can reduce your costs, it's it's, it's um, something that you can wave a big flag about. But in the background, if you sign something that had a, an order renewal that, um, that bites you down the line, or if you did not negotiate business downturn, or um, or the ability to move a circuit if um, if you decide to move a branch, and so those things are, are understand the terms, understand how your business works, because it's not pure price. It's uh, think about operationally what's going to happen if um, if technology changes and you sign a, five, a seven year contract to get a low price. Technology changes and you can't get out of that contract to go to the next, um, negotiate something in a, um, a, a business downturn clause, uh, technology refresh clauses. Uh, I would never sign uh, an order renewal. It's not in your best interest. So understand the terms of the contract. Uh, again, 
it's fine to question during the first meeting. Second meeting, you're going to come in prepared, understanding the contract. And at that point in time, you start hitting from him, the person for things that you need to have changed. Right. No, that sounds great. So um, if I want to sort of take this as a few takeaways, you know, the first thing I hear heard you say was it doesn't have to be entirely adversarial. Ultimately, if you're going to have a long term relationship with somebody who's good, hopefully we can create situations that are are win win so that both they'll want to give me good services and terms and I'll have something that actually has a quality service that, that I want. Uh, second thing I heard was you know, keep keep it kind of close to the chest. Don't necessarily give away all of your situation so that you, you have something to negotiate with. Um, and also something I personally am bad at, ask a lot of questions. Just, just don't assume everything that's on the piece of paper is there. Get as much information as you can so you're making intelligent decisions. And then I heard when you come back and do subsequent negotiations, don't just think about money, but think about the other types of terms that might be innocuously thrown in there, like auto renewal uh, or other types of clauses uh, like downturn uh, business um, and some other other things that ultimately can lead to an overall value of the contract, but they don't necessarily at first blush look like they're just money. Right. Negotiate in or out the terms that are specifically within that contract or deal and then ask what else can you do to make this more attractive? Take, take them outside of the box of that contract. Ask them if they have promotions. Ask them if there's, uh, um, if there's any uh, revenue commitment that, um, that would reduce my payment over time. You know whether you're growing or not. If you, attend, if, if you intend to grow, you know that you're gonna add more branches, you're gonna add more circuits, and, and you can say, if I grow my spend to X, can I get a discount? Change the deal. Don't go uh, specifically within the box of that contract. Go outside of the box and ask them to go outside of it too. Say, make it attractive for me to uh, to sign and let them think about it. They'll come back with something. That sounds fantastic, Dan. Hey, you've given us some really good ideas here. Contracts are not some something people hate these contracts. But if we look at them in the right way, we can take something that becomes a pain I have to do every year or two to an opportunity for actually creating a win-win situation with my partners and giving myself, you know, better services in the process. That's great stuff. Thanks a lot for your time, Dan. Um, I hope everybody enjoyed this uh, version of uh, FinServe Tech Oracles, and we hope to see you on future broadcasts. Thanks, everyone, and have a great day. Thank you.